Hey, do you need to add some shortcuts to the desktop or perhaps have a program start automatically and you want to do it with a group policy? Well, fortunately, it's pretty easy to do. But there are a couple of quirks, in particular, if you want to limit this to a certain group of people, if you want to run a GPO filter. So without getting into too much techno speak, let's show you how to do it. First thing you want to do on the left here, by the way, I have what you can see up here at the left hand corner is a DC, it's a domain controller. Windows 11 is the machine on the right. So first thing you want to do is bring up a group policy editor and let's go create a new group policy because that's exciting. So right click and select create and link a new group policy. I'm going to call this um, desktop icons and startup shortcuts. Okay, you can call it whatever your heart desires. That's what I'm going to call it though. Let's click on that. And now I'm just going to right click on this and select edit. This is a, well, typically it's a user setting. So you want to go into user configuration and down to preferences, then into window settings and into shortcuts. And then from here, not very hard, uh, but it's a little bit different than some of these GPOs. So let's uh, show you a couple of things here. Right click and select new shortcut. The action that can be set to update or to create, well, you can set it to any of these really, but uh, uh, the difference is that update is probably the best one because if it's not there, it will create it. And if it is there, what it will do, instead of creating a second one or a dupe, what it will do is it will just modify it, which is great. So I'm gonna call this, uh, let's go, let's call this go to you are uh, tech website, okay? And yeah, that's, awfully wordy, but I'm just trying to make the point that you can call it whatever you want. Target type. This is an URL or an address. And uh, where do we want to put this? Well, the location we want, you can see you can put it in the desktop or the start menu. So if you wanted this to launch automatically, you could put it in startup in particular. We won't do that for this one. We'll do it. Uh, we'll do two of these and you'll see uh, how to get something to start up automatically in a minute. So let's go with uh, let's go with adding the shortcut to the desktop first, and the URL is https urtech.ca. In case you weren't aware, the domain name is not case sensitive. None of this is case sensitive. The only thing that's case sensitive is what's after the slash. So any so that for instance is different from that. But but I digress. We'll leave that alone. Okay, shortcut key. Not going to have a shortcut key. And we're going to add an icon in a minute, but I want to show you what happens if we leave it blank. So, because this is just the simplest thing to do. Uh, simply put in your name, specify it's an URL, where you want it to show up, and then what the URL is. Okay, so let's do that. And then another one uh, we will do, well, we want Notepad to start up automatically. So let's go in here and go, uh, let's call this one uh, Notepad. And uh, this is, in fact, a file system object. It is not an URL or a shell object, so just leave it a file system object. And where do we want this to go? I want this to go to the start menu. Uh, sorry, to startup. Now, if I wanted this to start for all users on this computer, I could set it to all users startup, but I don't. I just want it for this particular user. So let's go to startup. And the target path for this is C Windows Notepad. So the point of this is not to show you how to launch Notepad, it's that you can put in any program you want. The one I most commonly get asked for is Outlook. People want Outlook to start automatically, and for some reason there isn't a ready way to do that uh, other than something like this, so a bit weird. I'm not going to set the start in, I'm not going to set the shortcut key or the icon path, I'm just going to click OK. Okay, so let's go to our computer on the right here, which is Windows 11 machine and I'll select Windows Terminal. I don't have to run this as an admin because this is, uh, the policy we set was for the user. It's not set for the, for the computer, so I don't have to use it as admin. Let's do GP update slash force. Now you could reboot. Uh, in fact, you could just log off and log back in. And look, there it is. There's our URL that just uh, showed up on the, on the homepage here. And let's show you that Notepad is now going to be in Startups, let's go to C, Users, this is my test account. 
Uh, by the way, uh, we're going into app data. If you don't see app data, what you need to do is click the dots in the top corner here, go to options, and click on view, and turn these on. I like everything on. I do not, this is the default, and I don't like it. I want to see everything. Okay, so there we go. Let's go back to app data, and then it's in uh, roaming, Microsoft, Windows, start menu, startup, programs, and then startup. Bingo, there it is. So if we were to reboot this computer, just log off and log in, Notepad would start up automatically. I could demonstrate that for you, but anybody that knows what they're doing would know that that's what's gonna work here, so I'm not gonna waste your time. Let's get rid of this now, and you'll note that I can get rid of it. Uh, now, it'll just come back as soon as I log back in next time, but as a user, I don't have it, I haven't changed the permissions or anything. Now, let's say what I wanna do is, I want this policy to apply, of course, but not to everybody. I only want it to apply to a few people. Okay, to keep this video short and on topic, I actually separated this into a second video, this part about security filtering. So click the top right-hand corner if you're interested in security filtering, if you're interested in making this policy or any policy for that matter, lock down to just a particular user or a group of users. So let's show you one more thing before we call this a day. Let's right click on the GPO and select edit and drill into it, which is right there. And for this one, let's say we want to set an icon. And uh, I was working with a client who was trying to work with uh, a product called IFS. So I went out, stole the IFS graphic and made an icon. And uh, yes, it does need to be an ICO file. So don't just take a JPEG and rename it. Uh, and Windows default is 96 by 96 uh, pixels, as you can see there. Anyway, if you want to assign an icon to something, you need to get that icon into a place that everybody can read it. They don't have to write to it, but they need to read it. In my client's case, they had given up on file shares and they'd gone exclusively to SharePoint, which I personally find nutty, but that's their choice. So how could I get around that? Well, I don't like putting things into the sysball, but uh, icons are pretty small. And so what the heck, that's what I did. You can put it anywhere you want, but I'm gonna put mine into the sysball, which, okay, let's go through it properly. See, just in case you don't know where it is, see Windows, sysball, and just press enter and then go into sysball and then select your domain and you can put it anywhere here i'm going to put it into scripts and then the path to this is whatever your domain is in my case you are a tech and sysvol and then you just click your way through it scripts there it is and i want that entire file name so i'm going to paste it at the end here so let's copy that Let's go into here and change the icon file path. Now, another thing you could do is if you don't have an icon or you don't know how to build one, by the way, there's lots of free ones online, uh, you can click the three dots here and select one of them. So that's what I'm going to do just to make it more interesting for you to show you that if you have, you know, no, if you have very limited skills or you, you know, you don't know, uh, you just don't want to screw around with this, you just want, but you do want an icon on it, let's just pick one. So let's choose this one. Just choose that one. Okay, there we go. That is the icon. And then let's right click here and go to Windows Terminal. Again, I don't need to run this as a, an admin because this is a user policy. And I don't need to log off and log back in because the user is already part of the group that I limited this to. Let's see what happens here. Ah, you know what? I do have to log off because this is cached. So let's log off back in there we go and I want this to be on the right and I want you to see this come up live there we go and there it is that's the icon hey if you found this useful please give us a like it's really helpful with the Google algorithms and if you like this type of thing, please subscribe. Very helpful again. Please leave a comment below. If we don't get back to you, somebody else will. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.